powers do you have? I mean, this this hoo ha cropped up because you decided that the Scottish fishermen should come in and report their catch to Douglas before they went to their home port. And that caused a kerfuffle, which seems to me, after a lot of noise from the Scottish Parliament, that you had to roll over and have your tummy tickled. It seems well, you gave in. And there is a, a view that that happened. In fact, it's far from the truth. Uh, it wasn't just reports incidentally to Douglas. It was any one of our ports. We have, for a number of years now, uh, ensured that uh, Queen Scott fishing boats reported to a Manx port before they returned to their own port so that we could monitor their catches. Uh, it was felt and uh, it was discussed at the Scallop Board that we should, bearing in mind intelligence uh, that there was good evidence that people were not sticking by the rules with the reduced catch limits and the total catch. And if we don't do that, it just throws all our conservation measures out of the door uh, because we have to know what's being caught. You only have to look at how the Queen Scallop uh, population uh, stocks crashed after 2011 and how carefully we've had to control that since. Last year we had a real race to fish in the King Scallop fishery and I uh, introduced a, a limit very quickly, fortunately, but even that has not stopped a marked reduction. But yes, um, there was an element uh, of uh, uh, resentment, um, kickback from fishermen who to a certain extent, we're right. Um, we were penalising everyone and adding additional cost for those that were uh, engaging in miscreant behaviour. So uh, it, it was flagged up, and uh, as these things do, we negotiated. And I'm, I'm very pleased to say that the Scottish fishery and the other surrounding fisheries acknowledge that there is a problem. We all see that there is a problem and that needs addressing. So after some negotiation, uh, it was decided that we would lift the requirement to uh, to return to uh, a Manx port before going to the port to land and introduce a measure where uh, after e examining our legislation uh, the AG's office uh, informed us that we can suspend licenses on reasonable suspicion. So these boats were fishing in Manx waters have a separate license so to do? They have a Manx license. They're not a UK license. It's uh, a Manx they, they will probably have a UK or, or Scottish license uh, as well, but to fish in our waters, they need a separate Manx license. Well, how then do you police it? I mean, uh, first of all, you, you must have had some suspicions to do it in the first place. We, we, we have indeed, and uh, we've had fairly good uh, intelligence on that, and that's acknowledged by the So how do you know now whether they're doing it or not? Well, um, let's go back to the original concept. Um, vessels fishing in our waters were required to return to one of our ports, or to call it one of our ports, to have their catch checked. Um, now, we, we gave a little bit on that, and we said that if they only fished in our waters, they could return to their home port without coming into a Manx port, because by law they have to make landing declarations, and we have access to those declarations, and we also have access to bills of sale, so we can check the amount of... Uh, and you're happy that fish. those are accurate? Uh, there's always an element of uh, possibility that they could be misreporting. But let's now look at how our measures work. Well, first of all, we do get intelligence and uh, we know what's going on. In how, terms uh, well, of, uh, what, the, what is this, this is other fishing boats telling you, is it? I, I, I'd rather not disclose our sources because, uh, uh, but we do get intelligence. But we, we have more sophisticated uh, monitoring equipment available to us nowadays. Our vessel monitoring system monitors vessels both in and out of our waters almost in real time and we can tell by the, the behavior of a vessel whether it's fishing or not. And who does all this? We, it's all done within our department with a very small team. And uh, So you don't have a, a the sort of Atlantic gunboat coasting around amongst them all? We then? have the Barul which is uh, actually sitting in Douglas Harbour as we sit here uh, which goes out and uh, boards vessels. I think the system we've introduced is is a win-win, really. It, it penalises... So it has the power to board a vessel? Yes, yes, well, it and when can. And if it finds something wrong, what is the power then? Uh, we prosecute, simple as that. There can it seize the stock? It, can it, it seize the boat? We can seize the stock, generally, prosecute, and uh, we can uh, suspend licences. And to be fair, uh, uh, I mean, 
most people are law abiding but you well. get the ones that do break the law and they're the ones that should be paying the price and we're fairly non-partisan with our well not fairly we are non-partisan uh, sadly uh, one of our own fishermen was caught recently and fined five thousand pounds for fishing during the curfew hours but i can tell you having bought in these new measures we have seven or eight boats that we have reasonable suspicion on and this was before we bought in the new measures they have been written to we have three prosecutions outstanding for various other offences and they will be proceeding fairly shortly um, and we are very adamant that this is a, a good measure that will probably in the longer term be more effective than getting vessels to return to so all. What's the